Well, folks, we're at the shop and I'm doing some work on the van, getting ready to work on my next project. Uh, as you guys know, I rebuilt the interior of the van here this last summer and I've been extremely pleased and happy with the way the van has turned out. It's been working great, uh, except for one thing that's been bothering me a little bit and that's my Snowmaster fridge. Unfortunately, um, this thing is just a little bit too big for the space where I want it. Uh, I want it obviously where you see it, but it uh, conflicts with my my seat and I have to always move my seat forward in order to get it to open. And then I also have to shove it over a little bit in order to keep the hinges from uh, binding on my cook stove uh, table there. I've tried turning the fridge around so that it opens this way. And then the problem I have is I actually cannot get to the latches back here. They are uh, too far down and I can't get the latch open and I can't get to the fridge. Also, the fridge is just big. It's just a little bit too big for the space and uh, I just don't need this big of a fridge anymore. I really love the Snowmaster. It's been a workhorse. It's been a great refrigerator. I've never had an issue with it. It's been a very solid, solid uh, refrigerator. But like I said, we're gonna make a change today. I've got a new refrigerator and uh, I'm gonna get busy taking this out and getting it in and then I'll talk about what I chose and why I chose it. So what I'm gonna do with the Snowmaster moving forward since it's not gonna be in the van is I'm actually gonna reprogram it to be a freezer and I'm gonna use it to store extra food in the shop so that way if I can get a good deal on meat or something like that, I can buy those bulk deals and be able to put them into the freezer here in the shop. All right, folks, so if you're thinking about getting a refrigerator like the Iceco JP50, you should also be thinking about how you're going to power that refrigerator while you're out in the field. Now, I personally don't recommend using the start battery. They're not deep cycle batteries. They're not meant for deep discharge. They'll, you'll shorten the life of the battery over time. Plus, you just run the risk of over discharging the battery, leaving yourself stranded while you're out in the field. So a couple options that you can look at is a, put a full dual battery system into your vehicle, or B, look at a portable system like this Jackery 1000. Now, living in my van full time, I have other accessories that I have to run, like my fan, lighting system, heating system, plus I'm also working out of the van. So having a high-end dual battery system that was properly installed makes a lot of sense. So if that's far too complicated for what you're wanting to do or what your needs are, you might want to look at the second option, which again is a portable power system like the Jackery. It doesn't have to live in your vehicle full time. You can charge it at home. And in most cases, like the 500 and the 1000 that I have here, you can also charge on a cigarette lighter port in the vehicle while the vehicle is running. You can run your refrigerator off the 12 volt port Plus it does have some USB ports and other uh, AC ports here that you can use for other devices while you're also out in the field. 
This can be charged uh, via AC, cigarette lighter port, or the optional solar panel. So it gives you lots of off for what your needs will be. So again, like I said, if you're thinking about a refrigerator, think about how you're going to charge that or power that refrigerator in the field. If you're interested in a Jackery, please do use the link down in my description. It definitely does help the channel and uh, keeps Jackery powering my adventure. All right, folks, so the refrigerator I chose to get was the Iceco JP50. Now, the reason why I chose this refrigerator, two reasons, is A, I measured the space I had available and I started looking on Amazon for refrigerators that would fit the space and also still be within 45 to 55 liters. I wanted a refrigerator that was gonna be single zone, but I didn't wanna lose the space that I had in the other refrigerator. This is a little bit smaller uh, than the overall space I had available in the Snowmaster, but at the same time with 50 liters, it still gives me a ton of space. And since mainly one big compartment, there is one a smaller compartment in here, but it's mainly one big compartment, I was able to have no problem loading it fully with food. The JP50 also had very good reviews on Amazon, so it seemed like a good option. Plus, I also uh, have a, a buddy of mine who does also have this exact same refrigerator and uh, his experience with it was good up to the point as well. I did reach out to Ice Code, just letting you know they did send me this refrigerator. I've been using it for two months now. I've gone on a 600 mile off track uh, overland trip where, you know, bouncing and bobbing around inside the van and I've had no issues with the functionality of this refrigerator. Now, one thing I will note is that if you remember in the beginning of the video i said i kept the snowmaster at 34 degrees at 34 degrees in the snowmaster the top half of the snowmaster set about 34 35 degrees but the bottom half of the snowmaster was kind of right on that edge of wanting to start to freeze things that's how i like to set a single zone refrigerator because that way i don't really for me i don't really need to have that freezer section of the refrigerator because if I put something that's frozen down at the very bottom of the refrigerator it will stay frozen for you know a good couple three days so if as long as I stack the refrigerator accordingly I can put some frozen food down at the bottom and that will hold for a few days so if I'm on a long trip I don't have to worry about having a lot of unthawed meat inside the refrigerator. I obviously wanted to be able to do that same thing with the Iceco. Uh, unfortunately, what I did find with the Iceco is it must have the uh, temperature sensor. It says it's in the middle of the refrigerator, but when I tested it at 34 degrees, setting the Iceco to 34 degrees, I found that the upper half of the refrigerator was actually sitting closer to 45 degrees when I tested it with a laser thermometer and the bottom of the refrigerator was around 34 degrees. So I have my ice co set for 28 degrees and then that gives me the temperature range that I was looking for. So that's just something I have to be aware of. I tested this with my buddy Scott's refrigerator as well and we came to the same conclusion. So it wasn't just my refrigerator. It does seem to be across the board on this particular model. Still works, still works fine. Don't have an issue. Once I got the, uh, once I got the temperature set on the refrigerator, uh, to and got something a temperature range inside the fridge. I was happy with um, I have had no issues with it up to that point Another thing that it was important to me in the way that uh, this refrigerator I was looking for a refrigerator that opened this way if you remember the snowmaster the lids open this way That was problematic with my current setup with the lid opening this way It does make it easier again uh, for me in the van. So they that's completely my preference for my build, so you that that may not matter to you. As far as the way the fridge works, uh, inside, you know, you got one large compartment, and then you got a smaller compartment off the back here. It's kind of handy. I keep condiments and different things in it, and it stays kind of in that 34 to 36 degree range there. Inside the main compartment, you have a big basket and have all your food. The basket does have a divider in the middle, so you can actually take that out if you choose, if you just want one big basket or if you do want to be able to break things up, you know, side to side. Again, I try to keep meats and different things that I want to keep extra cold down at the bottom. You know, things like beer, soda, stuff like that, if you're going to do that. 
keep down it down I keep down at the bottom so that it's coldest and then I will usually load vegetables which I don't have any at the moment um, up on top so they don't freeze and they stay cool and crisp I do like the fact that I can pull this whole basket out of the refrigerator it makes it very simple to clean the bottom of the refrigerator inevitably you get stuff that falls through things that drip stuff like that I can easily pull this out quickly wipe out the bottom clean it out and then just slide it right back into the refrigerator and I like that it's just ease of cleaning maintenance so uh, that's great the refrigerator does have low battery protection so you can set you can look at the menu you can set a couple different settings to what you want so that way if you do decide to run this off your start battery that it will shut the refrigerator off before it hopefully depletes your start battery which again i've already mentioned i don't suggest running it off your start battery as far as functionality in the display very easy to set the temperature you just up and down on the plus and minus set it to the temperature that you want uh, it has a max and an eco mode. Max will run it at a higher wattage and allow the refrigerator to cool faster. Once you get it to the temperature you want, you may try clicking it over to eco mode and then it's supposed to run the compressor at a lower wattage and still maintain the temperature. I personally, I just keep it on max all the time. I haven't seen that it uses that much power or any excessive amount of power. According to my battery monitor, it runs about 4.5 amps when the compressor is functioning and running. Uh, as far as the uh, the build of refrigerator, it is a kind of a plastic versus say like the Snowmaster, which kind of had a metal outer lining. I do believe the Snowmaster, probably a little better insulated than this refrigerator. I don't see that it uses any more power than what I was using before when I was running the Snowmaster. You can get this optional slide. Now this is optional. It's not, it does not come with the JP50, but it is made for the JP50. Um, I really like it. Again, this just an added benefit. I can pull the refrigerator closer to me. So if I'm sitting here, I can more easily look through, get through the food, but it also is nice when I'm standing outside the van for me to be able to get into the refrigerator and grab stuff without having to climb into the van. It is a lock-in, lock-out slide. So right now, why it, it is, um, in its out position, it is locked out. So I cannot push the slide back in without using the lever. It does have a locking position halfway as well. And then it locks all the way back into the position. So you can see now it is securely in the van. So I don't have to worry about it falling over or moving or shifting in the van when I'm driving down bumpy roads. One of the features I like about this slide is this one lever you pull it up and it also gives you a good solid something to hold on to to pull the refrigerator towards you. Other slides I've used have a lever over on one side or the other and then you have to like push it down and usually try to find somewhere else on the refrigerator or slide to grab it to pull it. So I do like the fact that this is just one, you know, pretty much one easy motion, just pull it up and pull the, the, the slide back. The slide moves smoothly. I don't uh, have any problem with the way that it moves. It's nice and smooth. It seems durable and, and, and not flimsy. Like I've had slides before where you pull them out and when you start kind of getting them all the way out on the outside, they, they start to droop. This one does not do that. It just, it pulls out. It seems to hold securely. And uh, like I said, the, the movement of the slide is smooth. So. Uh, something you might want to consider for your build it'll just I mean I'm sure it'll be build specific but like I said it functions well it's sturdy and like I said built for the JP50 uh, refrigerator so all in all right now fridge works great have no complaints just be aware of the temperature thing um, maybe do some testing check to make sure that it is keeping your food at the temperature you want but uh, now that I've kind of worked that out and figured out what works best for me 28 degrees keeps it right above freezing at the bottom 34 to 36 at top and uh, that works really good for the single zone refrigerator for me i haven't missed at all having a freezer running the refrigerator in that way so it works really well for me so just something for you to consider again anyhow guys if this is something that you might be interested in getting the if the uh, iceco iceco did give me a discount code you can look for that down below in my description 
If you guys found this video to be helpful in any way, please do give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those down below, and we'll catch you guys again outside.